When you've got an injured bird, in this case, I've got a juvenile pigeon that's been attacked, I think, by a hawk, and he'll be depleted of electrolyte, which is flushed under stress. So first thing is, forget about the wound. Let's get him some electrolyte. This is just a little organic sugar in warm mineral water. The main thing to remember as well, and I am the world's worst nurse, I can't bear to look at my own blood, never mind anybody else's, but is don't panic, so you might be feeling terrible about it, it might be your favourite bird and you're really upset, but do try to keep calm. So what we're going to do now, is we're going to just pat on a homemade antibacterial wash and I'm going to make that with warm mineral water and two essential oils. One is Lavendula angustifolia or true lavender and the other one is tea tree melaleuca alternifolia. And I ha always have this ready, it's my little poultry emergency kit. I've got some organic cotton wool and that's because 25% of the world's pesticides are used on cotton so there is no way I wouldn't use organic cotton wool. I mean I use it on ourselves so I'm always going to use it on our birds so it seems to have calmed down a little bit. It's a very nasty experience but it's got away and it's going to be okay. And again, remember, even if your bird has got a really awful wound, if he looks like this, if he looks lively, and he will be okay because the wound will restore itself. I've had horrendous wounds on pigeons and they've completely cured. Even one that was very badly infected, it completely healed. So we'll wash the wound and then we'll go on to the next stage. Obviously oil and water don't mix, so we're going to swish them about a bit so we get some sort of emulsion. Both these oils are painkillers. Lavender is a painkiller and tea tree is actually an anaesthetic, so that will solve any pain problems that little bird will have. They work really well. So we just want to make a, a large pad with the organic cotton wool and then we're just going to apply it to the wound. Very nasty wound. I don't think people really want to see it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna keep talking to your pigeon the whole time, telling him what you're doing. This is all gonna make you better. Can you just turn him into the light a bit more? That's right. it. He's not flinching, so the only thing is, I think he's got damage to his crop, which is really awful, so we're gonna have to seal that up. Sorry about the gore. But this will be acting, as I say, as a painkiller and anaesthetic, as well as stopping any infection. And these, these two essential oils are two that you really should have in your chicken first aid kit, because they're wonderful. Essential oil gets into the blood and goes into the system very quickly. You can see by the way he's moving his mouth that he's beginning to taste that lavender. There you go. Poor baby, you okay now? Don't worry. To say the main thing is, keep calm, keep pigeon calm. You're okay, you're gonna get better. And if this was a wild bird, I would bring one of my own pigeons in from the dovecot so that the pigeon would have another pigeon with it so it would know that I was trustworthy. Main thing in doing anything with any bird I've always found is that the bird has to trust you and know that you're not trying to harm it, you're just trying to do it some good. Do you think this pigeon fought this walk off? 
Okay, so we're now going to come to the next part of the procedure. So it's a superb therapeutic clay. It also is excellent for stopping bleeding and sealing wounds. The only thing about it is you have to be careful there's a protocol for using it because once it's wet it will start to withdraw toxins if there is anything toxic in its immediate vicinity. So this is why we use china bowls, so use china or glass. And it also reacts with metal in that it starts to lose its therapeutic nature in contact with metal. So I use wood or you could use a glass spoon and then you mix it. Don't put water in first, mineral water in first, put your mineral water in afterwards and then you can slowly mix it to the correct consistency. Okay. So we're going to pack this into the wound. No doubt in your own country there will be another source of therapeutic clay. If you know what that is, then please do put it in the comments below this film so you'll help other people who may be living in your country who are searching for clays. We're going to try and seal this, which will keep the infection out of it. It will also form a new skin on top of the wound. We'll hold it together and I shan't be taking this off. I shall let the pigeon eventually take it off. It's, it's not anything you can take off. And if it looks like the wound is infect, becoming infected and we don't know, the hawk might have had a dirty claws or a dirty beak, then I shall feed some more essential oil into the wound through the clay. Is it all right under his wing? Yeah. yeah just oh yeah, it finishes there. It finishes, finishes there. It's just a bit tall. Yeah, it's a bit tall there. I just don't want him to get away from me because... Um. I'm going to have to hold him now while it dries. And it will dry quite quickly because it's not very deep. The wound I had before was and another pigeon was terribly deep. In fact, the, the hawk had actually eaten the whole of his side away. The bird recovered incredibly well. And I don't know how, how it happened, but when I finally looked, there was nothing there. It was just as if the skin and everything had grown back. So magical sort of substance, this. Wonderful patient, you little baby pitch. Really good pigeon. So I think we've got that now. The other thing you can do is you can get I, I keep all my old organic t-shirts and I've worn them out and I use the organic cotton from the t-shirt just to make a bandage, but I think it's better if I just hold them till it dries. It won't take very long. Okay. And then I'll put him away for a night's sleep. This is four days after the injury. What happened was on the second day, I put him outside just to see if he needed to be with his friends, just to have a, a little drink. And water came out of his crop. Obviously he had, did have a hole there. And also he had an infection. So I just fed one drop of tea tree onto the clay. So that would sink through the clay into the wound. And then I also added some more clay and I put a cotton wool waistcoat onto him. He also started eating as well. That was the second day, he started to eat on his own. On the third day, which is yesterday, he started to talk again, because he is still a baby, so he still is, makes a little squeaky noise when he wants to be fed. Now, that was the first time he'd made a noise since the injury. And he's got a lot better with me. He's really tame now. He doesn't like you to approach him from behind, obviously, because that's, probably where he was attacked from so that still worries him. His beak, as the swelling on, he, on his beak has gone down as well. Oh, he's going down. He's still got a slight bit of injury there. But as far as this is concerned, even though he has a 
hole in his crop. It, if it's only tiny, and I'm sure it's where the claw went in, it's a tiny hole. So what I've done is I've stopped him having anything too liquid, been on a, a diet of wet food. easy to eat and it's very easy to feed and that's pasta and it's just got a little coconut oil. Come here, come near to me, there's a good chick. Because he's still a baby, he's still used to being fed so it's easier to feed. He's still at the squeaking stage. So he's been picking up food on his own, little bits. I just want to get some coconut oil into him. Support the immune system. And that'll help with the healing as well. So it's eight days on, and I should have known, being a juvenile pigeon, what he kept doing was he kept trying to pull the clay off him. Even when I had put uh, cotton wool uh, over it, that's what he was doing. And he ended up with cotton wool on his beak, so that was the telltale. And yesterday he actually pulled the whole thing off. But you can see, there's still some clay left, but it's healing very nicely. I'm going to get an old organic t-shirt because I keep all those. I'm going to cut the sleeve off and I'm going to make him a t-shirt so that he cannot get to it because all he's doing, I mean, he's, it's a typical sort of baby thing to do. He's, he's just exploring what this is and put it, it's just like somebody pulling their plaster off. I'll put the clay on again. I'm going to put a little bit of essential oil in it just in case. And then I'm going to put a, a, a soft cotton wool layer and then we'll put the little t-shirt on. So there he is, he's looking well, he's eating well. He's behaving badly, <laughs> but that's a good sign too. And everything's come back. He's speaking, preening and eating. So he's got all those functions back, which are lost when a bird is either in stress or is ill. Has he taken it off yet? No, he's fiddling. He's all right. <laughs> if you enjoyed this film, and perhaps you've enjoyed other Sue and Andy films, then maybe you'll think about supporting us on Patreon. We've got a lot of new ideas and new projects that we'd like to get going, but we do need support to do them. So follow this link and see what you think. Thanks for watching. <laughs>